We good? Is my mic going? Uh, and verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be filled. We bless you and honor you today, Father. We thank you for your goodness. We pray, dear God, that you'll bless us as we share your word. You'll anoint our ears and our hearts, our voice. Lord God Almighty, we ask for utterances in the Holy Ghost. Give you thanks for your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. We've been sharing on the Beatitudes and... Uh, we are on the fourth one. Blessed are those who hunger and uh, thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Last week we shared on uh, the fact that uh, when you're hungry, it'll drive you. It's like a driven passion that comes because we are hungry. When we are hungry and thirsty, Many times we will do things that we don't normally do. And uh, we shared a little bit on that. And uh, we'll finish uh, on this beatitude next week. So we'll share some more thoughts today. But many times we, we ask ourselves questions. If you don't, then you need to ask some questions. Because many times people will say, why should I believe in God? What has God ever done for me? Well, the fact that you're here means God has done something for you. You didn't come here on your own. This is not your planet. This is God's planet. And you didn't just turn up because you're clever. You are not that clever. So many times we need to ask questions and we need to be honest. When we find answers, we need to be honest because we know that Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer to everything. But then we get smart sometimes. Uh, like in the classroom in Australia, they were looking out and they saw a possum climbing a, a, one of those uh, gum tree. And, and the teacher said, uh, who knows what that is? And uh, one boy said, I know the right answer is Jesus. So we get smart that way. We think we are clever, but we're not that clever. So we ask questions, for example, why did God spend 4,000 years to prepare the planet for the coming of His Son? Why could He not do it in six days the same way He created the heavens and the earth? Why could He not do it in one hour? After all, he's God and he's able to do everything. And he can do anything exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. So we need to ask ourselves the, us the question, why did he take that long? Is he that slow? Because if he didn't take that long, then we wouldn't have wasted the lives of so many bullocks and, and goats and sheep that were sacrificed to prepare for the coming of the sacrifice. Why could he not just turn up at the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve fell so that we could save the animals their lives? Hello? So we ask these questions and if sometimes God may answer us and sometimes you will get the answer straight away. Sometimes you don't get the answer for a long time. And then you wonder, does God even speak? The Bible says God made your mouth so God can speak. God made your ear so God can hear. And his eyes over us and his ear is open to our prayers. You ask the question, why go to church? I can do church from home. Why give to God? Is God broke? Does God need my tithe? Does God need my giving? Did he ask you to give before he created the planet? Is he able to do things? Well, he did that before you were born. 
So we need to ask ourselves these questions and be honest. And if God answers you straight away, bless his name. But if he doesn't, it doesn't mean that he hasn't got an answer. So even Christ on the cross asked a question. Why have you forsaken me? Here is God in the flesh asking God. The God who knows everything. The Bible says Jesus Christ was the son of God. But yet he learned. How can a man who's perfect learn? How do you learn? If you're Christ and you know everything, you created the planet. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. And him was light and the light was the life of men alone. If he's perfect, how can a perfect person learn? So we ask these questions, and if you're honest and you wait for an answer, the answer will come. But if it doesn't come, what happens if God does not answer your question? Does that, does, is that, does that mean that he hasn't got an answer? Or maybe he's waiting for you to grow? What happens when your seven-year-old son says to you, Dad, give me the keys to the car. What do you say? Uh, how come you know the answer to that question? Wait until you are 13, 15, 16. You can't even drive the thing. And sometimes when we ask God a question, you may not be ready for the answer. You need to wait. Our problem is we don't like to wait. We are so much in a hurry to live life, we think it's our life. If God takes your breath away, you're dead. And you'll be dead forevermore. And we'll bury you in animal. Hole. Hello? The Bible says, everything that has been created, the animals, the fish, you and I, we all wait for him because from him comes our breath. And when he takes our breath away, that's it. So sometimes God may answer you straight away. And I am amazed at the answers God gives to me straight away. And you will be amazed at the, some of the silly questions I ask God. We don't have a TV at home. We haven't had a TV for a long, long time. But I know that uh, uh, I, like, I like rugby. I don't, I don't love rugby. I just like it, okay? So one day, I know I couldn't, I couldn't watch the TV because we didn't have one. And I asked God, I said, who's going to win? And God said, so I rang up some friends. I said, hey, uh, <laughs> it was a game between Australia and New Zealand. And I told them who's going to win. Now, during the course of the game, it looks like the one that was not going to win were winning. But uh, the one that God told me was going to win, they won the game. Now, Sometimes you say, that's a dumb question to ask God. No. When your children come to you and ask you a question, you don't say, that's a dumb question. You have to answer them the way they are and where they are. Our problem is we think we are experts in everything. Do you understand what I just said? I understand it. So it's like that sometimes, that God sometimes may answer, but we don't understand. On the other hand, he may delay the answer. So when Martha and Mary's brother Lazarus was lying sick, and they sent for Jesus, and uh, Jesus, the Bible says, he decided to stay an extra two days. So when he turned up, the guy was dead. Now, we have this mentality. If he had come when he was sick, he could raise him up. But if he comes when he's dead, it's too far gone. From whose perspective? From our perspective, he's too far gone. He's dead. From his perspective. Sick or not, dead or not, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he live, though he dies, yet shall he live. And if you don't believe in me, even though you live, you're dead. And there's a lot of living dead around. There's a lot of dead people driving cars. 
That's why the Bible says, don't marry an unbeliever, because when you're a believer in Christ, you're alive. If you marry an unbeliever, just marry the dead man. Have you ever married a dead person? So these are questions that we ask. And sometimes the question asked and the answer that come is not immediately understood. So you, you tell somebody to give their life to Jesus. What for? Is he able to do what I want to do? Can you put bones in the belly of a woman? He can. And that's a fair question. Can you put bones in the, in the womb of a woman? And if you find bones in the womb of a woman, you're going to be... It's a problem. But God made babies and put babies with bones in the middle. The, hello? Yeah. Can you do that? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Say amen. amen. So... The, the question, the, the, the beatitude is those who thirst, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And last week we spoke about hunger and the things that people do when they are hungry. Now I want you to uh, listen because many times we see things from our perspective. We perceive life from our perspective. So you can have a a Samoan perspective. You can have a, a, a Maori perspective. You know, the, how you view life, your, your worldview. And then when we ask God to give us his perspective, and he gives it to us and we don't understand it, many times we have another question. Let me ask you a question. You know, when he said, uh, my ways are not your ways, they are higher as the heavens are. And then he says, you're seated in heavenly places with Christ. But he said, hang on a minute. I'm at 127 Springvale Road. So who is correct? Are you seated in the heavenly places or are you sitting here? And our perspective is so powerful that many times we will cancel out what God says. Why? Because we walk by sight and not by Hallelujah. Help me, help me preach, okay? So, when Jesus said this, and it's hard to, to, to take, he said, my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And then try and interpret that. And then he says this, he that eats my flesh and drink my blood will have life. Now, interpret that. Why? Because when you interpret that, you can only see it from your perspective. So when they could not interpret what he said, everybody that followed him left. And then he turned around and said to Simon Peter, are you going to? Simon Peter said, where can we go? You have the words of life. So, when you're hungry, you know, Moses turned up and Moses opened the heavens. What did he open the heavens for? For bread to come. So, bread literally fell from heaven. Not the loaves that you buy at, uh, at the countdown, but manna came down because heaven was open. So, he opened heaven to satisfy their hunger and then he opened the rock to satisfy their thirst. Bread and water. And then he opened the Red Sea to separate them from Egypt. And it's almost like you will never know what it's like to be fulfilled spiritually unless you're separated from Egypt. And many people still live in Egypt, 
but they want to know this God. It's almost like God will not open the heaven for you if you live here. You have to separate yourself. You have to open the Red Sea and cross over before the heaven will open and the rock will open and they will bring food and water. But while you were here, you were also fed by Pharaoh. Our problem is when we get here, we compare what Pharaoh fed us and what now God is feeding us. And then we say, when we were in Egypt, we had fish, we had cucumbers, we had leeks, we had garlic. If you can't see a Jew, you can smell them coming. But we compare this food from heaven and this water from the rock. We compare that to what we had here. And then we said, we want to go back. Hello? But if you're going to be hungry and thirsty for righteousness. So this journey from here. And sometimes God will let you be fed by the unclean. There are times when God will feed you with Pharaoh's food. But if Pharaoh's food is the only thing that satisfies your soul. I can feed you with food for the body, but he can't feed your soul. Only he can feed your soul. So are you sitting down here in Wanganui, or are you sitting in the heavenly places? Because if you're sitting down here, you're looking up. But if you're sitting up there, you're looking down. Are you looking up or looking down? It depends on your perspective and where you're sitting. Now why don't you go and sit up there so that when the problems come, you can look down at the problems and say, oh yeah, it's fine. Because if you sit down here and look up and the problems come, you got no answer. And then you stew. Hallelujah. Are you all right? So you got a Moses coming across and opening the heavens and opening the rocks. The only problem is they didn't like that food. It tasted like coriander. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Allard, Mr. Allard is cheeky. He was here this morning and when I was speaking from home one time and the chainsaw next door went up and he said, oh, the chainsaw is disrupting the chainsaw. And he put that on Facebook. For those of you who don't know, the meaning of my name in Simon is chainsaw. So I was, chainsaw was preaching and chainsaw was going next door. And I said something about coriander this morning because I did not even know that that was coriander. And I went to, to, uh, to Asia and I, I had this soup and it, it smells so strange. And then I came back to New Zealand and somebody made a soup and said, there's an Asian thing in here. I did not know that coriander is not an Asian thing. It's everywhere. <laughs> and then Mr. Allen this morning said, uh, the coriander, we've got coriander at home. It grows right well next to the rhubarb. <laughs> now rhubarb was not made by God. Coriander was, but rhubarb was not. Perspective. What's that? That's, that's a God perspective. Let me, let, me, let me tell you where coriander came from. Let me tell you where rhubarb came from, all right? The Bible says when man sinned, thistles came up. Thistles came up as a result of the fall. When the thistles came up, uh, what's the name? Rhubarb came up with the thistles. So it's a result of the fall. And if you eat rhubarb, you can only eat rhubarb here. There's no rhubarb here. It's only manna from heaven and water from the rock 
but you have to go back here because rhubarb is here. You find coriander here. Mana is like coriander, but rhubarb is here. And don't grow coriander next to rhubarb. They shouldn't go together. They're like marrying an unbeliever with a believer. Are you all right? <laughs> so there's a song that we sing, and it's just come on the scene just recently. It, is, it goes like this. He keeps on getting better. A question I want to ask you, does God get better? No, he doesn't. The theology of that song is wrong. God is the same yesterday today and forever god never changes god is absolute love he's absolute holy he's absolute righteous everything about god is perfect so when you sing he keeps on getting better getting better getting better whose perspective is that ours because in heaven he doesn't get better because if god gets better you're saying god's not perfect but from our perspective, it's, it appears that from our perspective, God gets better. He gets from glory to glory to glory to glory. But in heaven, God is absolutely perfect. And all good gifts and all perfect gifts come down from the Father of light, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. But there are people who try to interpret God who is perfect and all-powerful and all-good from their perspective. And they said, well, God is getting good today. God was good yesterday. God is the same at night as he is in the middle of the afternoon. When they came to fight, they said, oh, God is a God of the mountain. Let's go fight them in the valley. When they fought them in the valley, they got whipped. God is the same in the valley or on the mountain. Glory to God in the mountain, worthy on the mountain and worthy in the valley. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. It's the same. doesn't change. But from our perspective, because we are journeying in this uh, three-dimensional realm, we don't even know what it's like to be seated in the heavenly places because that's a fourth dimension. But we only see things and so until we see something or we, we try to define something and until it's, we're satisfied. So we have a lot of people that don't believe in demons until they met a demon. Hello? So you have the question, can a demon have a Christian? Then another question, can a Christian have a demon? <laughs> Are you all right? So this journey from here, where you're fed by somebody or something that is unclean, you separate yourself, you're pursuing, and you come into the wilderness, and there is supernatural supply and many times we don't like the supernatural supply because we are so used to eating rhubarb here. <laughs> Hallelujah. So they asked themselves a question. They asked God, they said, can God lay a table in the wilderness? And then Jesus said, look at the birds of the air. Look at the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. Have you got enough money to give them breakfast every morning? Can you feed the birds of the air in the morning? No, you can't. There's not enough money to feed them. But my Father in heaven feeds them. Are you not much more than the birds? So this journey for us from Egypt to the promised land is a pursuit. 
Hallelujah. That is divine. And when we ask questions many times, the question may be great or the question may be silly. But if our heart is honest, many times God will answer our question. I asked God a question one time because we were going to speak at a conference and I'd fasted and prayed and got absolutely nothing. A lot of people say, oh, I fast and pray, God turned up. Well, bless your darling heart. I fasted and prayed, and the conference was on Friday, and come Friday morning, I haven't got a message from heaven, and uh, we were packing up to drive to the conference in Wellington, and I was so despondent, and my wife said to me, what's the, ma what's the matter? And I cried. I said, I'm going to speak tonight, and I have got nothing to say. And uh, she felt for me, she was praying, I was driving, and we got to Levin, we stopped at the Beacon Bookshop, and we went inside to have a look, and we were coming out, and she said, uh, 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 she bought a little uh, daily bread thing, and uh, we started to drive again, and, and uh, she said to me, uh, can I read this to you? So she read it to me, the story of Elijah, and, and uh, the woman of uh, Sarepta, and uh, and when she read that to me, the, the, the thing just came to my ears, went into my spirit, exploded. And I started to cry. And she said, what are you crying for now? <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm crying because God just told me what to share tonight. So I cried when I didn't have anything, and I cried when I got it. <laughs> and then we got to the conference, and the place was packed. And I was meditating on what to share. You know, I've been fasting and. So you're, you're quite sensitive and meditating what to share. Now, come, come the conference time I shared, it was the hardest message I've ever preached up to that time. It's like walking uphill backwards. And it was shocking. And I just managed to get through it, you know, methodically, just like you're doing, you know, it was, it was terrible. And at the end, I thought, well, I'll come this far and... I might as well make an altar call. And, and I made an altar call with the wrong spirit. I was quite angry. Because I didn't feel the anointing. I didn't sense a flow. It was just terrible. And I said, if God's talking to you, get here. <laughs> I don't know if they got here because of the message or because they have shouted to me. But the whole conference got up. And they came to the front. And I thought, did they go to another meeting? In fact, again, I was angry. I was angry at God. Now, this is being honest. I was angry at God because I did not know why the people were coming. And I was so annoyed. I, somebody said, are you going to pray for me? I said, no, I'm going home. That's how, that's how, you know, I was trying to grapple with what I'm sharing this morning. And this man, he's a big guy. He saw me right at the back of, a, of the auditorium, the hall. And he lifted his hands up like this. And he walked the length of the auditorium with his hands lifted up like this. And when he came to me, he squeezed me. He was strong. And he picked me up and he said, where did you get that word from? I said, what? I almost said, what word? <laughs> and there was a, a minister who was training to be a minister. He's got a church. And he's that very day was going home. And he already rang his wife and said, I'm coming home. I've had it. And he was going to a, a Bible college at Tanikau in uh, uh, Paraparaumu or Waikana, one of those places. And he was there to be trained and uh, he's already got a, a church and he was there to do more training. And he was so despondent, so discouraged, said to his wife, I'm coming home. After the meeting, before it was finished, he went outside and rang his wife. He said, uh, honey, I'm not coming home. I just heard from God. And I thought... Where were you? I mean, obviously people got something because they all came to the altar. We went home to where we were billeted. And uh, the guy that, that uh, hosted the conference and his wife, they were co-hosting of the conference. She was the head of Women as a Glow. He was the head of Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship. And we were staying with them in their home. And when they came into the house, we got there before they did. 
When they came in, they didn't walk in. They floated in. She said, whoa, 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 whoa. Where do you get that from? I said, what? That word. So you know what I did? I asked God, God, what actually happened at that meeting? You know he never answered me. It was about 13 months later that he answered me. Now I asked that question when we were pastoring in Mangaweka. He answered that question when we were pastoring in Wanganui. God may answer quickly, but what happens when he delays the answer? And I was preaching here on Joshua, and the Bible says Joshua came to the flooded Jordan, and, and God said, send the priests in there, get the elders and the deacons going there, carry the ark, and the Jordan divided, and people walked through dry grounds. And I said to the Lord, uh, so, and the Lord said, that's what happened when you spoke at that conference in Wellington. I said, what do you mean? He said, read it again. And I read it and I said, they walked on dry ground. How can it be dry when there was a river flowing through it? It was dry ground. And then the Lord said to me, he said, when, when you ask me to give you a word, it's like to you a flooded Jordan. And when I gave you the word, it opened your Jordan. But when you walk through, it was dry. And you're trying to question me about the dryness of your message. Because you thought it should be flooded with flowing anointing. But you were already in the middle of your miracle. The reason it was dry is because you were halfway across the miracle. And when he said that, so, and then he said to me, tell my people that many times when they have a dry experience, when they want to give up, look again, because they are in the middle of their yes. miracle. Whoa. So what do you do when you're in the middle of a dry Jordan you forgot many times that it had been flooded. But now you're walking through dry ground. What happened? You forgot that it was flooded. And when you walked through and it was dry, you questioned God, why is it dry? If you're here this morning, <coughs> and God is speaking to you through this message, we'll finish next week. I want you to stand to your feet because I want to pray for us. If you know somebody that's standing and you're sitting down, can you go and just uh, stand with them? All right. Because your honesty about your question, I want you to know this. God loves you. And God is the answer. And if you'll just give him a moment. Resurrection will come. Let's pray. Father, I pray for everyone that is standing. I pray for those that are watching on live stream. Some of those standing, some of those watching on live stream may have never given you their lives. But today, Lord God, some of the answers to their questions have been answered. And I pray, Father, that as their hearts are open right now, that you will come into their lives and touch their hearts. If that's you, just pray with me for a few moments. Lord Jesus, I open my life to you. Come into my heart. Be the answer to my cry. Help me to serve you. Give me a hunger for you the rest of my days. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, I pray for everyone standing. For whatever reason, sometimes we waited so long that sometimes we want to give up not knowing that 
we are right in the middle of our miracle. So, Father, I pray that our eyes will be open, that what was flooded before is now gone, and we are walking across. We are crossing the river, just like we crossed the Red Sea, just like we crossed the, the wilderness. We are crossing the river into the promised land, Lord God, and help us, Lord God, grant us your perspective, Father God. And Lord, I pray that everyone who stood because they heard you, and Lord, that you will touch their lives. They didn't stand because somebody else was here but you. They only stood because they heard you today. And because they heard you, you and you alone are the one that can touch their hearts. So touch them right now. Minister to them. Bless them, I pray. We give you honor and glory and praise. You're a great God. In Jesus' name. And everyone say Amen. Give the Lord a hand. <laughs> and God bless you. Come and grab the kids. They are there. All right. Have a great Sunday.